Hello students, welcome back to my channel Easy Tips in Botany. Today we are going to see the continuation of the first year topic that is the biological classification. In that, in the previous class, in the previous video, what we have we have observed till where that is the <clears throat> first two classes, phyto phycomycetes and the ascomycetes we did. I explained. Now we will go with the, the third class in the Kingdom fungi, that is Deciduomycetes. Deciduomycetes. Deciduomycetes is a class where the commonly the organisms which comes under this class are the mushrooms. We know about the mushrooms, isn't it? So, these mushrooms will come under this class only in the fungal kingdom. And these mushrooms along with that some other organisms are also there which are also and this also called as the commonly called as the mushrooms. And bracket fungi So this Basidiomycetes class is also called as the mushrooms class because uh, all mushrooms comes under this category and the other uh, ones what we can call them as with the another name as the bracket fungi and the or else we can call it as the puff balls because they look like the puffy like structures that is the puff balls bracket fungi. Why we are calling it as a bracket fungi? How the mushrooms looks? Mushrooms looks like an umbrella shape. That is, looks like a bracket lab. How, how we will say the, we will put the bracket like this only? Even the mushroom body is of like this, dome shaped. So, we will call it as the, basidiomycetes class as the mushrooms, bracket fungi are the puff bones. And in this, uh, what are the, <clears throat> general characters and all the mushrooms are the saprophytes in this organism in this class and few are the parasitic in nature and always these are commonly called as the mostly we will call the basidiomastis as the club fungi why we are calling it as a club fungi because they are growing at one place together as the gathering of the organisms of the people. So in the club, club means don't think in any other different way. The club means where we will gather together to celebrate one thing, otherwise to play something or else anything. There is a club, what we will say. In the recent words, what the gatherings, whatever we are saying at one place when we are gathering, Initially, in the golden days, what we used to say, there is a play place, playground, okay, ground. After that, that comes under the one roof. So, we used to call it as a hall, okay, playing hall. And after that, the once the civilization was done for us, and we want to give a good name for the different games which were conducted at one place, that is called as a club now. This will be, usually we will uh, misunderstand the word club because you are the one what we know is only the bad things will occur over there, isn't it? So now leave all those things. Now come to the point as the club over here in the Basidiomastis class. Club means gathering otherwise a large number of the same category of the fungal organisms which are growing together. So this is called as a club fungi. Okay, because all this once we should remember, tell the neat exam, this is a neat wise point. All this class is completely neat wise. Damn sure we will get a question from this. Two questions we can get from the fungal organisms together. I'm saying in the first year and the second year syllabus together, we will get two questions from the fungal organism. Direct questions always. No indirect and nothing is there in this to give the assertions and reasons. Always all these ones are coming under the mass of following ones. So remember the 
common names and the scientific names and the organisms which belongs to it and what is the reserve food material. No reserve food material in all this one is the oil droplets. Apart from this, what is the difference? Saprophytes, otherwise the parasitic unicellular or multicellular and the without septal wall with septal wall. Okay. And how the sexual uh, asexual reproduction occurs inside the organism outside the organism. That's the one what they will ask from all these classes in the fungal kingdom. Remember all these things. It'll make a list of these four classes and say about the each and everything in one page. Then only you will have the differences. And once we have seen, we'll be knowing about this basidiomycetes class. So, okay. So these basidiomycetes are always also called as the mushrooms. Otherwise, the bracket fungi or else the puffballs. Usually, this is called as a club fungi and in this these are the mostly the saprophytic organism few are the parasites on the other uh, other host cells that is the basidiomastis class and in this the um, <laughs> so whenever they are growing as a parasites they will cause the infections as the rust or the smut disease to the plants Okay, that is the most important one in the basidiomycetes class. And the and these organisms are the ones which is having the mycelium as a branch and the septate mycelium. And uh, the mycelium is having the ring-like structures called as the rhizoids. And the uh, body is uh, in the mushrooms, that is in the agaricus, it is having a unbranched stem-like structure. And on this, a dome-like structure, which is placed on the stem-like structure, it is called as the pileus. And on this pileus, on the ventral side, we will see the gill line-like structures, which are starting from the tip of this stem-like structure. So these are called as the gills and this stem like structure which is having a cap protective cap on this thing till the three fourth part of the mushrooms that is called as the stipe and it is having the rhizoids for it at the bottom that is the mushrooms and the and in this the as the reproduction occurs mostly by the which state uh, sexual reproduction and the sexual reproduction a sexual reproduction occurs by the formation of the basidiospores which are produced on this okay so these basidiospores are produced externally outside the organism that is on the ventral side of the organism on the pineus, these spores are produced called as the basidiospores, and these basidiospores are present on the basidiophore. Okay, so otherwise the basidiocarp together we will call it. And these basidiospores are the ones which will after uh, releasing. They will fall on the suitable substratum and start developing into a new uh, fungal organism. And in this, uh, the uh, structures during the sexual reproduction, the fusion of the two hypha will occur. That is the two nuclei from the two hypha. And this is the dikaryotic structure has to be formed. And sometimes after this, before this also, the hypha is having the two nuclei in this dikaryotic type of the nuclei can be seen. So this is in the only in Paxinia. Only in Paxinia we will see the dikaryotic phase. Okay. So this dikaryotic phase is the one after the uh, dif uh, different uh, strains, otherwise the different uh, hypha which comes together for the fusion. At that time, some, uh, some hypha will be having the single nucleus, some hypha will be having the 
two new two nuclei in them. That is the dikaryotic cycle. So in Paxinia only we will see this type of dikaryotic phase as well as the single nucleated cells also. We cannot say when this will be occurring in the Paxinia itself. Okay. And this, the nuclei, after the fusion, they will become the diploid zygote. And this diploid zygote is the one which is producing the, with the meiotic division, the haploid deciduospores. Okay. So these deciduospores, now the diploid structure, what is present in the, uh, on the hypha, that is called as the basidium. And which is producing the spores are called as the basidiospores. And in this, uh, the basidiospores are produced outside the organism. So that is the exogenous, not the endogenous, not inside, outside the organism only. That is also one of the most important concepts what we have to remember in the basidiomastis. That is example, Paxinia and the agaritas. Paxinia is a parasitic in nature. And the next comes the mushroom, that is the acaricus, which is having the acaricus, that is the mushroom. And in this, the asexual reproduction, otherwise the vegetative and the sexual reproduction, all three will occur in this, which is which are forming the fragmentation, otherwise with the uh, button-like buds which are present on the rhizoids which will do the vegetative section type of reflection that is the button mushrooms which will be giving the next organism by detaching from the parental body and the basidiospores are produced on the basidium on during the reproduction process in the agaricus and the mushroom will causes the rust disease on the wheat leaves okay remember this is causing the Rust disease on the wheat leaves and the agaricus is the mushroom which is growing as a, a saprophytic organism and which is the edible part which is highly proteinaceous. And uh, it is a few species only edible. All other species are the highly poisonous one in the agaricus otherwise in the mushroom. And the next one is the ustilago. which is causing the smut disease in the plants. Okay, all these are the ones which is causing the infections to the plants. That is the Paxinia, Ustilago Paxinia causes the rust on the wheat plant and the Ustilago causes the smut on the plant body. And the another one is the Lycopardon, that is the puffball. Lycopardon. Puffball. The common name for this is the puffball. Okay. Like this, the different organisms will be there. And the last, last class under the kingdom is the Deuteromycetes. Deuteromycetes is the uh, indefinite class, otherwise the imperfect class also we can say. imperfect class. That is, there is no specific life cycle in them, which is going to produce the new or next organism. So these are called as the, the organisms which comes under this class are called as the imperfect fungi because they can, after, first of all, they start their life in the heteromycetes class. After that, they can complete their life cycle with the Phycomycetes class, otherwise ascomycetes are basidiomycetes. So there is no consistency of the life cycle in this organism. So these are called as the imperfect fungi and they don't have the specific reproductive methods also, specific reproductive mechanism. So that is completely different one from the other three classes. So it is called as the imperfect fungi. And in this imperfect fungi, we'll be having the most examples are three examples are there. One is alternaria. Alternaria and the trichoderma. 
and the next one is the Polito Draco. So, Artemaria is the one which is uh, uh, causing the early blight disease in the rice and in the sugar cane. And the polytotrichum is the one which is causing the red rot, red rot disease in the sugar cane, uh, polytotrichum. So, I have written for the trichoderma. Polytotrichum causes the red rot disease on the sugar cane. And the trichoderma is the one which is having the, which is giving the infections for all the different types of the organisms. So we went to the animals also, there is a trichoderma. So like this, and this does not have the any specific life cycle. So first of all, they'll start their life cycle, nectaromycetes, all these are the saprophytic, otherwise the parasitic in nature, and the reproduction occurs effectually, otherwise the vegetative reproduction. Okay, and these organisms after starting the reproduction from this class, and they will move to the, they will complete their life cycle as per the trichomestris class, otherwise ascomestris or basidiomestris. So these are called as the imperfect fungi, otherwise the deromestris. Only in this, in this, the asexual reproduction occurs by the formation of the conidia. Okay, so with this, we have finished with this kingdom as the fungal kingdom. Now comes with the, the fourth kingdom as the plantae and the fifth kingdom as the animalia. And in this uh, plantae and the animalia, where we have to go with uh, the complete details of this uh, plant kingdom in the next chapter, okay? Where the plants were divided into two, again, two divisions. That is the uh, phanerogamy and the two kingdoms or two sub-kingdoms, phanerogamy and the cryptogamy. That is uh, non-flowering and the flowering plants. And the non-flowering again divided, and the flowering is again divided. And all these are the highly evolved branched organisms of the eukaryotic cells in the plants and the animalia. And the plantae, where the they are the completely autotrophic in nature, microscopic to macroscopic, all the ones are the autotrophic in nature. Whereas the Animalia, they are not the autotrophs, so those are the heterotrophs. So we have kept in a separate kingdom only all the animalia. Okay, and in this uh, plant name, all the plants are having the, the reproduction can be uh, done by the asexual, otherwise the vegetative and the sexual methods. Mostly uh, the plants will opt the sexual type of reproduction. That is, uh, they can go with uh, the, um, because they are having the, two different sex organs, male and the female. The male sex organs are called as the pollen grains, and um, that is the anther. And the, in the anther, pollen grains are produced. And female reproductive part is called as the gynecium. And in this, one haploid egg cell is going to be present. So by the fusion of this, we'll have the diploid zygote. And from this uh, animal plantae kingdom, that is uh, the plantae and the animalia, all those cells are initially, they are diploid in nature. Till now, in the, uh, in the monera, protista, fungi, all the organisms are haploid in nature. Initially, the cells are haploid in nature. Now, the cells are initially diploid in nature. So, in the plantae, in some plants, vegetative reproduction can be seen. In some plants, the sexual reproduction can be seen. No maximum plants, sexual reproduction. In few plants, only vegetative reproduction can be seen. And these, uh, there were the uh, deployed otherwise the haploid whatever may be this one condition for the cell but the in the life cycle of an organism whenever the reproduction has to occur at that time once only the meiotic division has to occur in the plant body so based on this concept the uh, deployed cell initially goes with the forming the haploid spores 
that is in the primitive plants, whereas in the evolved plants, what happened? The diploid, uh, diploid cell will produce the diploid spores, that is the diploid zygote. How the diploid zygote is formed? By the reduction division from the diploid cell to form the male gametes and the female gametes, gametic fusion occurs to form a diploid zygote. And this diploid zygote without any reduction division now forms the otherwise goes with the form making the parental cell which is diploid in nature like that. Okay. And in this the pollination occurs by the different means that is the one what we read in already in the uh, seventh chapter sexual reproduction in the flowering plants so that is the one what we have then so this one in this what the classification how which type of plants will come we will see in the next one okay and uh, apart from this next kingdom is the animalia Animalia means all the heterotrophic organisms were kept under that kingdom where these heterotrophic organisms are the highly evolved diploid cells are present. And in this, the sex organs are very well developed in such a case. The organisms were divided into male and the female organisms by the presence of the different kinds of the sex organs in it and all these are the mode of nutrition in the animals is the holozoic that is they will take the food by the invagination okay ingestion otherwise invagination that is a holozoic type of nutrition what we will say okay and then these organisms are the in the organism the reserve food material is the glycogen bodies Okay, otherwise the fat molecules, glycogen bodies, otherwise the fat molecules we will see in these animals, those will store the food material in them. And in this, the higher organisms are having the motor, that is the neuromotor mechanism, that is the nervous system is very well developed and the sensory organelles are much more developed and the evolved, uh, elaborated then the evolved sensory organelle system can be seen in the animal kingdom. Okay, and these are completely can motor show the motility from one place to another place that is also one of the plus points in this organisms in the animal kingdom also we can see and now comes with the next topic by seeing all these things the another scientist who came into the limelight that is the Carl Woos. he has given the a six kingdom classification he said that the Vitakars of Five Kingdom classification is not the correct one. It is the Six Kingdom classification. He said that the first kingdom, that is the Kingdom Monera. In the Kingdom Monera, the Archibacteria, Eubacteria are there, no? Mycoplasmas and the other organisms. And in this one, the Archibacteria are the ones which are having the one more in the uh, in the, in between the archibacteria and the u bacteria one more kingdom should be there that is nothing but the bacteria they said because bacteria are the ones which can be made, uh, made as a separate kingdom we cannot include them with the uh, cyanobacterial members so he said bacteria is the one which is having the separate class and the kingdom Archibacteria, 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 Eubacteria, Fungi, Plantae, and Mantra. These are same. So, how many kingdoms came? One. Two, three, four, five, six. So the first bacteria, Monera, was divided into two kingdoms. That is the bacteria and the archibacteria. He said that we cannot combine the bacteria, otherwise the eubacteria 
members with the any other members in the one kingdom as the class. So they have separated them into a separate kingdom. There is a six kingdom classification by Carl Lewis. And he has uh, done with the one, he said that uh, with the cars of five kingdom classification, those rules only we need to take over here also. But here six kingdoms should be there. Okay. And uh, after this, we will, uh, in any other, in any of these classifications, they have not considered the two organisms. So those are the viral organisms and the lichens. What are viral organisms? Viral organisms are the non-living entities. Viral organisms are the non-living entities. We cannot call them as the cell. And we have to call only the organism because it is having a specific shape. So we have to call it as an organism. But uh, when they are, they don't have the cell wall, not a plasma membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus, any other cell organelle. No cell wall, no plasma membrane. Okay, no cytoplasm and no nucleus. So with this, the organism is a considered as a dead organism. So these are, um, but having the specific shape, that specific shape comes with the protein coat that is uh, present in these organisms, which is having a specific shape for the organism. And inside this, uh, it is uh, having its own genetic material to causes the infections and the same characters need to be transported. So that is the genetic material should be there. So like this, the organism is having the dead, the dead entities are having the protein port and the genetic material and in them no cell wall, plasma membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus. Okay, so it is uh, considered as the non-living entities. And these viral organisms are covered externally with a protein coat called as the capsid. The protein coat in the viral organism is called as capsid. And this uh, inside this capsid, the genetic material is uh, present in the viral organisms, which is made up of the proteins. And the genetic material, the genetic material in the uh, viral organisms may be DNA, are RNA, any one kind of genetic material only present, not both the ones as in the bacteria, what we will see. In the viral organism, only one kind of genetic material, that is genetic material is also present inside the capsule that is made up of filmy proteins. And the um, only the genetic material also causes the infection, only the protein coat also can cause the infection. And in this, uh, the familiar ones, the viral organisms are the tobacco mosaic virus. TMV, which causes a mosaic infection for the tobacco plant. So based on the host only, we give the name for this organism as the tobacco mosaic virus. Okay. And in this organism, the main genetic material is RNA. And it is having the rod shape in structure. The organism is rod shaped structure. And the it is completely covered externally with the protein subunits are called as the capsomers. Protein subunits called as the capsomers. And these capsomers are the ones which are having the capacity to cause the infection as well as the genetic material. And once only the capsomers are there, then it can make the body of the organism. And if only the protein coat is there, then also protein coat can make its genetic material again. So any one thing is present, it is sufficient for us to get the infections. That is the viral organism. And this viral organism will be, uh, will not have the life cycle. We cannot, we cannot call it as a reproduction. Sorry. We cannot call it as a reproduction. 
if the reproduction we have to say then the cell should be a living one having the nucleus but it does not have any nucleus na? so the when it will go with the reproduction that is making the multiple copies of its own this called as the replication process or else we can call it as a life cycle anything okay and all this reproduction that is the replication of the viral organism occurs only in the host cell because the viral organism is having a life till the host cell survives. Otherwise, it does not have any life. And in this viral organisms, two organisms we need to go with the structures. One is the TMV, tobacco mosaic virus, and another one is the bacteriophage. And the TMV is having the rod-shaped structure and the entire body is made up of the protein port called as the capsid. And this capsid is uh, having the protein subunits called as the capsomas. And each and every capsid is having the genetic material as RNA in it, that is the uh, how many amino acids of 58 amino acids are present in each and every uh, genetic material of one capsule here. So like this, uh, how many capsomas are present for this also, we need to say. Okay, then uh, this entirely we will see in the other, you know, how this reproduction occurs and the, what is the exact structure. And this is having the, so the entire capsid is leaving a small opening on the anterior side that is called as the central core. In this central core, the main genetic material of the viral organism is present as the spring-like structure inside this. This is the RNA as the genetic material. Okay. And this uh, capsomers are of uh, the entire molecular weight of this organism is uh, 39 into 10 to the power of minus 6 Daltons. There is a molecular weight. And in this, uh, uh, the entirely, uh, these are the capsid and the capsomers. Okay. This is the one what we have to learn from the TMV and it causes the infection for the tobacco plant. And the length will be the uh, 15 to 16, uh, 15 to 17 nanometers and the width will be the uh, 6 to 8 nanometers in the diameter. Okay, in the width uh, for this uh, organism. And the central core is having the diameter of uh, 0.4 angstroms, okay, 0.4 nanometers. That's the central core diameter in the, in the TMB mosaic virus, tobacco mosaic virus, okay. And then now comes with the, the bacteriophage. Bacteriophage is the organism which is uh, causing the infections to the bacteria. So viral organism is that much powerful so that it can cause infections including the bacterial organism. So those organisms are called as the bacteriophages. And this bacteriophage is having the tadpole-like structure. And the main genetic material in this DNA. And it is uh, having the organism can be divided into two parts. That is the head and the tail part. The head is always present in the hexagonal manner. And the tail is present on the one side of this organism. Like this. In the center, it is having the genetic material as a baby. And the head and the tail portions are separated with the specific part. It is called as the collar. The functions of collar were not at known. And the tail is having the, the entire body is covered with a protein coat called as the capsid. The head is covered with the 
very thick protein coat called as the capsid and inside this the genetic material is the DNA and the below the head and the tail in between the head and the tail it is having a collar like structure and the tail is having the tail core, tail plates, tail pins and the tail fibers. Okay, so the tail only we have to draw like this. Okay, only the tail part. This like this we have to draw, and the tail is having the tail core. This is the tail core. There is the in the uh, unbranched stalk like structure that is present at the bottom of the head. That is the having a central column straight column that is called as the tail core okay through this tail core only the genetic material is going to be passed during the uh, attack of this vital organism to the bacterial cell or any other host cell and below this the central core below this tail it is having the sharpened pin like structures are present in the six in number three on one side three on another side so the two only i have drawn the rest of the one will be present behind it so, six are present as the tail pins and these uh, tail pins are present otherwise originated from a plate-like structure called as the tail plate. And below the tail pins, it is having the tail fibers which are meant for the holding the host cell. So, like this. So, these are the tail fibers. And this bacteriophage is the one which can cause the infection to the bacteria. And this is a much very, very harmful viral organism. And these viral organisms are having the capacity to give the infections without the genetic material. Otherwise, only with the, that is only with the coat. Otherwise, only the genetic material without it, the protein coat. So, the organisms which are having the only the protein coat and the genetic material is completely absent in them. Okay. So, the one, these are of two types, viroids and prions. Viroids and the prions. Viroids are the, or this was the first identified by the diner. Diner. And uh, he has I identified otherwise discovered them as the infectious agents which were very smaller than the viral organisms and this was the first observed in the potato tuber. So they are they will cause the infections as the potato spindle fiber. Okay, the potato spindle fiber that is the potato spindle tuber disease for the potato tubers. And these viroids are having the is having only the lack they are they are found to be free of DNA and lack the protein coat. Okay. They are having the free DNA in it. And protein coat is absent. That is the viroids. Those are the viroids. And the genetic material here is the RNA. So RNA. Okay. The protein, the genetic material is RNA, and they does not have the 
protein coat and only the free DNA that is the easily available RNA. Sorry. And this RNA is the one which is causing the infections to the other organisms. When this enters into the organism, then it can make its own protein coat and make the organism shape so that it can insert and can uh, give the more infections to the host cell. That is this. And they are having the uh, less molecular weight and the smaller in size than the original viral organisms because they don't have the protein coat only. And this RNA is also having the less molecular weight. Next comes the prions. The prions are the ones which are having only the protein coat will be present in them and they don't have the genetic material. And if the genetic material is not there, then also the protein coat which enters into the host cell can make its own genetic material and causes infections drastically in the host cell. That is the, those are the prions. And these ones uh, are having the, uh, they will give the infections to the animals, mostly the cattle. That is the uh, scrapie disease in the sheep. Okay. That is the one what they will get on the skin allergies, the scrapie disease in the sheep and the bad coat disease in the cattle. That is the cattle will become very much bad. They will keep on going like that on the behaving. That is the mad cow disease. So, and the last topic in this one are the lichens. Lichens means the symbiotic association of the fungal and the algal members are called as the lichens. And these lichens are the ones where the fungal body is a present outside and inside to that is the algal body. Okay, fungal, algal body and the fungal body. And the they will live in a mutual relationship. That is the symbiotic association. Algal members are the autotrophic, which will prepare the foam food material. And the fungal members, they cannot. So they will give only protection externally for the algal members. Instead of that, they are giving the prepared food to the fungal organisms. Like that, these two organisms are surviving. So the uh, al algal members which are present in the lichens as a symbiotic association are called as the Phycobiont and the fungal members which are living in an association with the phycobiont are called as the mycobiont. Mycobiont and on this, uh, in this one, which is a present externally, that is an eat wise person, mycobiont will be present outside, which is giving the somewhat wall like occurrence, rough protection, okay, uh, ash colored wall like occurrence. That is the dry one, which absorbs the outside moisture and gives to the algal members. They will absorb the, take up the water, and in the presence of that, they will prepare the food, and that food was given to the fungal surviving. And instead of that, they are getting the protection from the other other enemies by, for the algal members. Okay, and algal members are present always inside the fungal member. That's the neat wise question what they will ask. And why we are learning this lichens? Lichens are the ones which are used as a sensors to measure the pollution levels in the outside weather. Whether if we are growing the lichens on the dividers, then if pollution is more, the number of lichens pollution is very less. So with this, we can say the pollution is more in the outside weather. If the lichens are growing large in number, then we can say that is it is uh, having the less pollution, so the organisms can grow very fast. That is the pollution levels, pollution indicators also, we can say the lichens. So with this, we have finished this chapter and we will go with the next chapter in the next class. Till that, stay tuned to the, my channel, that is the Easy Tips in Botany. Don't forget to subscribe my channel. Right? Thank you.